as the reception continues, the woman in red, now known as Melisandre, finally makes her way to the Lannis King Ralphie, who is in charge of the House of Baratheon. Well, I see, I finally found you. Yes, um, is there something that I need to know about? Yes, I got a visitor from the High Priestess of my religion sect for those who, as I do, believe in the God of Fire. All right. I reluctantly did not see this coming, and it doesn't mean, in case you are starting to think ill of me, that I have been decadent and slacking in my duties. There are those of us who have higher powers than that of which I possess. She had informed me that she has spotted one not of this world, nor of any known kingdom. Apparently, when I had told you about when the fire had changed to the color of blue for a moment of time, apparently he is already here. I see. And you didn't see this before? No. While I do have certain powers to perform certain spells and see certain things within the flame of the God of Fire, there are times that I may not see something that only a High Priestess may see. She has informed me of this, and apparently this one is quite capable of not being spotted or he is being protected. I see. He kind of thinks about this for a moment. You don't suppose this would have anything to do with the one we had thrown a while back? I was kind of thinking the same thing. The High Priestess seems to think that when she saw him buying gifts with certain coins, where would he get such coins if he's not of this world or of any known kingdom? And if he did come with coins of his own, they probably wouldn't be accepted because they would look strange to us. So which case then, he must have been assigned something to do in his spare time to earn such a coin to buy such gifts. Yes, that would be interesting. And then you have to think about something else. While we here plan for driving her out once and for all from the kingdom of Marine, which helps the Harpies leader, and in turn they will help us so that you sit on the Iron Throne, the swords for the realm of the kingdom, who would he be buying these gifts for? And such gifts that they are so lavish. She had thought that perhaps he was buying them for someone of nobility or royalty. Like that of, yes, that of Daenerys Stormborn of the House of Targaryen. She would have came to me with this sooner, but apparently she feels that I I'm too well known as the woman in red, and I believe now is a good time, as I have promised you, I reveal my name to you. My name is Melisandre. I see. Well, at least now I finally get to know who you are. Well, you were not worthy or prepared to know my name, but now you should, because we will have to work closely together. And having two dragons in this world could cause you a problem. Yes, I understand. And that is what I was worried about before. Now that he's here, what are we supposed to do to correct the situation? Might I suggest, as I had before, we need to capture this one. Because should he get strong, either by whatever he eats or drinks or partakes of this world, Though he be of the legend and myth known as a human, and according to the High Priestess, goes by the name of William, but she didn't tell me what the rest of his name is. Such a union ship between him and, say, the House of Targaryen 
could be come on all I'm doing. And you are right. It's bad enough we have to deal with the mother dragons to deal from a legendary myth uh, from another world who would be represented by a dragon on the legend of home. Yes. That could be a problem. Never in time. Uh, all of their Targaryen history, let alone ours, has there ever been such a prophecy fulfilled? This greatly changes things. Yes, it does. Well, we better start sending out scrolls then. And he calls uh, one of his trusted aides. I want scrolls written out, sent to every kingdom who supported this before when they had Daenerys to throw. Let them know that the time is now, and time is of the essence. We need to rendezvous at Casterly Rock. There we will start our formations, and prepare to make plans with conscripts to move out, because there is no time to waste. I will, my lord. And so he takes off to do the writing of the scrolls to send out to the kingdoms that support him. Well, even though I'm still skeptical about your powers, and I'm not going to hold you at fault for not having seen this before, because apparently you've been truthful that the High Priestess may even have powers higher than yours. I will trust in your words that they have been truthful. They have. I have no reason to lie to you about this. Well, then we need to start preparing. There could be dangerous times ahead. I would agree. And so with that, they start planning on making a move in about a week's time or so. After some time of merriment and uh, having great discussions with each other, then William opens up the next gift, and he too is surprised. Wow! It's like royal towels with a, um, my name, W for William. Harry looks at it. He's impressed with this as well. Well, this is good, William. So now you have towels with your letter of your name, and I have towels with the letter of my name. So this is what royalty is like. I never experienced this in my world. Well, you still have to get used to a lot of customs and traditions here, but I will eventually help you through these difficult times. You still have much etiquette and mannerisms to learn. Not that you don't have any, but I would imagine that they're much different than what we do here. Well, I do look forward to these lessons. That is good. It will be most helpful when you learn these and the laws of our kingdom. For that which is by prophecy to unfold so that eventually I can finally have that which is rightfully mine. Well, I look forward to giving this to you. <laughs> and so they kiss on the lips. And uh, Tyrion happens to see that this then is quite pleasing. Well, we can't have you dripping all over the palace, now can we? <laughs> As he sits at the table <laughs> drinking his wine. No, you're right, Tyrion. Uh, that would probably be not something that would be, uh, well, look like I'm always wet in my clothes. So, he, um, and then opens up this next gift. This is one that, uh, looks like we both can share. And in it is goblets, one with, uh, some type of pink and blue stones, and one with blue and green stones. Oh, this is perfect. And she looks at that in this well and seems intrigued by this. This is where we can uh, have drinks together. I do like this. This is very interesting. Made just for a couple, I would imagine. Yes. And, um, well, I didn't know what to get. Oh, it came from you, Greyworm. Well, thank you very much. It don't be a strange custom. Um, seemed 
appropriate that our queen and um, human king uh, should have something to share together. Well, I, <clears throat> I do thank you, Grey Worm. Yes, Grey Worm, thank you very much. So then the next gift comes up, and um, it's, it's very soft, and it turns out to be some type of blanket, and uh, wow, William's impressed by this, very large. He doesn't bother unfolding it all the way because it would take up too much space. <clears throat> and there he seems to like this as well. Well, I know what we can use this for. You do. You know, for uh, when we can you know, snuff it. She kind of smiles probably this and doesn't say anything. Okay, William. That's all she says. And uh, so William gets the hint. That's probably something that should be discussed in front of everybody at the table. So pretty much they both love the gift. She then uh, also receives this fruit basket. This brings back some memories. It does. Yeah, remember when you first met? Of course, I didn't know your language then, and you didn't know mine. You fed me grapes. Yes, how can I forget? I felt as if I was feeding a new pet, which I still consider you to be because you're the only human in our world. Well, um, although it sounds weird for me saying this, I, uh, I'm glad to be your pet. <laughs> you are. You're accepting your position well, William. Yes, yes. I do go on in this. So, the fruit basket was quite wonderful. It had strawberries and grapes and apples and some other kind of fruits of her world. And so, it was quite the gift that they both should share. And when the fruit's gone, they can either refill it or use it for something else. William decides to go check out this other thing, and he noticed that it does have a backing, and that there's some hinges where you would sit down like a chair. He's not sure what to make of this, and Daenerys looks over to see what he's up to, and uh, kind of their eyebrows raised, not looks black as William as he lifts the, like a square plank upward. And notice that there's something about hole, but he doesn't see where the whatever is in it comes out. And it looks kind of funny because William's not sure, but he kneels down and kind of looks closely at it, almost sticking his head in it. Uh, William, you do know that's a chamber pot. What? Oh, it is? And he quickly stands up. It's <laughs> so old the birds not plowing. Oh William, you are um you are a strange human. I do love this about you. You do act strange, but uh you are quite amusing. I'm sure the chamber pot is clean. Well even if it was, I wouldn't dare stick my head in the thing. And everybody seems to find this quite amusing. I wouldn't even in my world stick my head in what we call a toilet or in some places call it a loo. Uh, I had no idea what this was. <laughs> it's okay, William. You have much to learn of our proper etiquettes and customs, but I do find this quite amusing about you. And you are turning quite three shades of red. <clears throat> well, um, he was the <laughs> accidentally, that's the lid slapped out there, but laughs like this. Well, I guess I won't do that again. So he retakes the seat, <laughs> shakes her head in quite amazement that he would do such a thing. And so this becomes quite the amusing moment for Daenerys, because this is just something that men of our world would never do, is stick their head in a chamber pot. Somebody else then brings a chest forward and opens it for her. Inside there is gifts of gold and silver and a bit of copper and some other special gifts inside. And uh, she's quite amazed by this. And uh, she then uh, gets another gift from uh, Queen Margie, who happens to be nearby. 
I hope you like this. I thought perhaps because symbolism is everything, that as much as you have gotten William something that kind of symbolizes you to being a stronger dragon, that this goblet might be one you might like. And then I put with it a special book, though there's no writing on the pages. I see, and uh, what do I do with this book? Well, for like special moments that you wish to cherish memories, you write on the pages, much like you would palace history of your kingdom, but moments that you and William share, you can keep to yourself, or if you wish, share with your handmaiden. I see. Uh, I think I know what they call that in my world. You do? Well, yeah, they call it a diary, but it's usually something that women write in. Um, they probably call it something different here. In my world, if a man does it, it's called memoirs. Kind of like what I'm doing with this electronic device of uh, my experiences. I see. Well, I do like this. And the dragon, according to Margie, as uh, she continues, would represent that uh, the symbolism of William, how he came into your world, the smaller dragon. I do like this. Perhaps I will write something on certain occasions when it would not be appropriate to write in the kingdom's book that I shall cherish all time. So this is what comes quite the gift then that Daenerys likes as she looks forward to the times where she can actually document certain things to remember and pass on to any children that she have. William then opens up with this next huge box. Um, I got this for you as well, William. Wow, that is just big. Yeah, it's a bit heavy. And so he opens it. Oh, wow. You like this? Yes. Oh, these must be the treats of your palace. Yes. Well, like me, I don't think he'll eat them all up. And uh, perhaps you may want to have something on occasion as well. Well, we can give each other treats. Yes, I suppose we could. And so then she opens up the next one, and it's a nice dress with kind of golden, a uh, bit revealing in certain areas, but not that William would ever mind. And it comes with a red hood. And she does love this. I shall wear this on a special occasion when the time's right. So, this was quite the outfit she likes. And uh, so, Mary's is, again, loves the attention that she's getting because this is something that she's never had before. She then opens up another gift and it has a scroll in it and some other like, fine stationery. And she reads the scroll. I see we've been invited to um, visit a particular area in Essaros. And they said that since we are married, there's a place called the Pool of Passion. I've only heard about this. Uh, Pool of Passion. Well, I told you a long time ago. As I started to have feelings for you, that there is such ecstasies and experiences you have never in experience before, and you have no idea of the pleasures that are yet to come to you. Although I have never had the pleasure of going to the Pool of Passion myself, it's usually for married couples and women who serve the couples of different nobility. Um, when I was married to my husband, Grogo, he would never, of course, go to such a place, but usually it is a place when one is married that they go to to experience pleasures. This will be, of course, part of our honeymoon, as you call it, of your human custom. Well, I look forward to seeing it. Oh, I'm sure you'll be turning many shades of red when you have no idea what this cool passion is. But I have heard of it, but I've never experienced it myself. So we both shall enjoy this. I hope you're okay. 
okay with the fact that though you didn't get many gifts, that others have gotten gifts. No, I'm fine with that. For me, it's not about the gifts of Mary, because you are my gift. <laughs> and she smiles about this, and they kiss each other for the longest time. And everybody seems to light it up how happy she is, and William is not, he doesn't take things personally. And William accepts this, because the Queen should be spoiled. And he doesn't mind that she gets more gifts than him. He just happened to notice that some kids look up at him and <clears throat> seem intrigued that he has these candies. So William then kind of moves the box over and motions for the children to step forward. And it's like, hi there. I know you don't understand me because I speak the human language. But, um, you know, perhaps yeah, if you promise to eat all your dinner, and they all seem to somewhat understand, as he showed the chocolates, they nod their head. If uh, you promise to eat all your dinner now, I can give you some treats here. I'm sure Daenerys won't mind. Because if your mom gets upset because you don't eat your dinner and you eat your candies first, then I'm sure Daenerys won't be happy with them either. So they look at each other and hold their hand out, and he gives them each candies to take back to the table. Then with a smile, he kind of looks at Daenerys. What? Nothing, William. You're doing just fine. And Sandy then kind of whispers to her, I guess he will do well to be a father for any children you have. Yes, I'm just worried he's going to spoil our children in the future. <laughs> they both seem to laugh about this a little bit. So then it comes time as someone then starts kicking on the glass and Tyrion gets ready to make his best man speech. <clears throat> Tyrion pours some wine and stands up. Well, I must, I guess this is what William told me was a custom to make a speech as a best man. Um, I'm not sure what to say about this human. He is strange who walks among us, but yeah, as long as Queen Daenerys seems pleased with him and accepts him, I guess we can too. Though some of us will find some of the things he does quite strange. I'm sure he won't be wearing women's scented oils anymore. Everybody starts laughing about this, <laughs> and she kind of smiles a bit about this. Not sure where Tyrion headed with this, and um. As much as I have to say, he has kind of made a good impression on everybody. Um, he had to, at his own request, which was good. He wanted to do it with right and look dignified by Queen Daenerys. Yeah, he held a sword like a dead fish. <laughs> oh, well, I just did, uh, like, oh, yes, I forgot. Uh, I do like the way Arya's halal spoken, but it was because their weapons were so heavy. I mean, they're heavier than from the ones in my world. So I made a wrist brace. You're not throwing this way either, are you? Well, no. Um, that's why I made my own sword, because it's lighter than I. It's not so heavy. Well, good, because I'm going to add that to my treasure store, because you made it. Oh, alright. So, Tyrion continued. As I was saying, so, and thank you, Arya, uh, yes, he had trouble holding a sword, which wasn't very dignified, but he did make his own wrist brace, and for his own, well, if he was any man of our world, he would have failed, but because taking in all his frailties and being low in sector, he did, yes, pass, and no one would expect him to do the craziest thing by trying to take an unsullied lawyer on. Though he had proven no treacheries and was not intended to take uh, this one's life, which Daenerys found quite pleasing, that shows that not that we'd ever meet any other humans, but humans may not be as treacherous as we think. One thing that I found quite interesting is that though he be human and low in stature, he doesn't seem to be able to handle the drink of our world, and this became quite amusing for everyone. He decides not to bring up the incident about the Queen Regent, in case that may not uh, 
didn't go over too well with the Marys. But there was times I did have to interrupt certain times that got a little too close for um, comfort. And it was bad enough it came in our world couldn't speak our language. And even only though he only had three glasses of wine, he couldn't even speak his own language. <laughs> <I'm> laughing <again. laughs> Well, it was strong. I mean, the wine in Ireland was not that strong, and well, it, uh, well, it was very hard for me to focus. She seems quite intrigued by the Terrians telling her. It's really. And I'm looking towards William. Perhaps maybe once I'd like to see how you react to this. Well, you want me to purposely get um, drunk? Well, I would call it something I want to observe. Because if it does affect you this way, I may want to limit this on you to get you far going. Well, I will do whatever you command of me. I know you will, and I love the way you so obedient for them. So here and then continues. But all in all, I think that now that William, though from a different world, has come into the Mary's life, I do wish them the best. I think that they will have quite the history to make together. And uh, looking sweetly. <laughs> She appreciates the things that Tyrion does and compliments her with. I think that though Daenerys has had many sorrows in her life, she deserves to be happy. And I would only hope that should there be any children that comes from the two of them, who would be heirs to the throne of swords for the realm of the kingdom when she eventually does get this, because as Prophecy says, this stranger who walks among us, who was once a myth and a legend, now it's reality, and no longer a myth and a legend. He continues on. I think that there is good things and great expectations that we can proceed in this one. And as much as the palace visionary had believed strongly that there could be many victories ahead. We all should, though he may act strangely at uh, times, give him much support. I believe that eventually he will mature and adapt to our customs and traditions, and that they have a long life together and much happiness. Here, here, and everybody then starts drinking, and she then looks over at William. And yes, William, I still want to have children. Oh, uh, well, it would be fun. Yes, and quite pleasurable with many um, sweet ecstasies that you have no idea. And I still want to play. You seem to always turn three shades of red. Well, I shall love loving you every night for as long as you want me to. Well, I can't stay in the chambers all the time. I do have to do queenly duties. So she was spun out about this. <laughs> but doesn't say another word about it. And so the tough subject quickly changed with another announcement. Then the trusted advisor then makes his next announcement of a human custom that William had shared with Masandi, and Masandi then informed the trusted advisor and guard that this announcement should be made so that, um, though it was part of the wedding outfit, then dressed as William had presented her, that she should try this and see if she got any best stimulation from it. And so they prepare to do what William calls by human conduct custom, removing the garter. Um, William, I never did understand why I wear these two things on my leg. Well, um, perhaps I can show you. 
uh, but you have to sit in um, the other side of the table in a chair and there's something I have to do. I have to move the garden, but not with my hands. Well, well, you have to pull your dress up. Well, that would be inappropriate. Well, you only have to do it once. <laughs> well, you continue to surprise me with these strange customs of yours. I... Alright, I will do this once, but I'll never do it again. Well, that's good, because it's only done once. Okay. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm going to do this. So she gets up, and a chair is put out on the other side of the table, and she sits down. Um, quite comfortably. <clears throat> and so... She then asks William, how's this supposed to work? Well, the one that has most of the lace is where I have to grab it with my teeth and once I have it removed from your leg I have to toss it in the air and the man who catches it it's like symbolism of good luck that he will one day find his future uh, mate, wife as you, uh, you or I would call him to be thrilled and have a queen of his heart I see well as much as I would find that interesting, William, I have a challenge for you. Uh oh. Uh, am I in trouble? Yes, because I didn't think that this is what was involved. You will not use your teeth. It is my command that you shall use your tongue. Uh, okay, I've never done that before. I hope it works. Oh, I'm sure it will. So she does, and her bright light is just beautiful, and you will do it on your knees. Uh, Alright, so he does, he kneels before her, and exposing her right leg, all except for, obviously, she doesn't want to expose too much, too close to her flower, um, he places his hands gently on her legs, and everybody's starting to applaud as he gets ready to do this and it seems hard at first he tries to get his tongue to lift upward on the uh, lacy garter and as he curls his tongue as best he can he just slowly at first um, drags it towards her knees but then uh, she allows him to grab hold of his teeth gently so not to scratch her or cause a minor injury, then finishes pulling it off the rest of her feet, her leg, uh, taking her shoe off and past her foot, and then puts her shoe back on. She quickly clambers her leg back up, looking at why I'm like, this was the most unusual experience she's ever put through. And, uh, so he, on one knee then, spins the got her on one leg and she crosses her legs sitting up straight up and looks at him kind of like this was the most unusual thing that she's ever been through and I'm not doing this ever again no it's it's one time custom so he tosses it in the air and um, someone in the crowd does catch it <laughs> And kind of um, tells William, you know, William, these customs of yours are strange, but I do find them quite interesting. Why humans would do such a thing? And she leans forward and kisses him for the longest time because these are such experiences and pleasures that she's never uh, in her whole Targaryen life as a young teenage Targaryen girl had experienced before. You have strange ways, William. But I do love you, and I love this about you. Shakes her head and kisses me for the longest time. And then they uh, remove the chair, and the seamstress then, who also had helped in preparing the reception, then um, tell Daenerys, now there's another human custom I was told about. 
am, it is where the bride, you, my queen, must toss her flowers to see the antidote. Me toss the flowers. Why would I do this? Well, I guess from what I understand, it's much like the, um, the garter that is by human tradition in the moon. Whichever lady catches this, she will be, in much symbolism, the future one to get married. I see. So, you had this whole plan plan. Well, I did say I wanted to blend human customs with yours. Yes, I find this quite interesting. Well, I suppose I wouldn't be able to keep these forever. So, the Caesars then has her her back to her crown. And looking down at her flowers, um, William then tells her, I promise you'll have many more flowers for this. Well, that is good. I guess these are somewhat special, especially the way they are bound. So, I shall try this human custom. Well, she didn't quite get it right. She was supposed to toss it over her head and ends up tossing it to her right. But William doesn't say anything to correct her on this, especially her being a queen, because he doesn't want to embarrass her. And she finds this quite amusing, with almost a type of laughter. Because it just so happens that Queen Margie caught it. Wow, I guess I'm the lucky one that gets these. <laughs> wow, congratulations, Margie. I, mean, I guess then this is a good omen that you'll get married. She kind of looks down a bit, not sure about that. I know, Margie, you have, from what I understand, been married three times and none of this has ever worked out for you. It always came in such tragedy. And then William kind of steps up to Mar Margie and she has a smile. Look at this way, Margie. You never know. You might find love yet. Um, I would imagine I've never met the guy but from what I've read um, well Jon Snow is single and as much as what Daenerys told me that, um, I guess they were to be married, but it didn't quite work out. But she said she'll reveal this in time to me as to what happened. You know, it could be opportunity. I mean, even though he's risen from the dead, I imagine he still functions normally. Well, that is interesting. I haven't really thought about that. And I doubt seriously anybody's just going to kill him off. I mean, from what I heard, he's a pretty tough... He's a pretty tough dude. Um, I guess he has some type of royalty about him. So it's not like it would be a unfitting uh, marriage between the two. And uh, should there have been a child that... Or he'd be a single father, you would be a mother to his child as much as you would be a father to yours. Yes, perhaps. But first, of course, we would have to find him. Not that I'm going to be pursuing him, but perhaps so. Well, you know, why should you two be alone? I think you both should be happy. And I think you and Jon Snow would make a good couple, although I have not seen him personally. Maybe being a human, of course. I'm not sure what he'll think of me. Hopefully he doesn't think I'm a total weirdo, as we would say in my world. Where <laughs> Dean and Mary seems to almost laugh about this. But it would be quite the honor to meet him. So with that, William then retakes his seat and... Um, um, Tyrion's wife then tells both of them, well, you two make a good couple. And I do hope you both have as much happiness as me and Tyrion has. Well, thank you, Marcella. And, William, though you be a human, I see good things in your future. 
I'm sure you will deliver as what the visionary has prophesied that you will. Though you may act strange, I will admit, and are somewhat of aloof. I think in time when you learn our customs and proper etiquettes, you will mature. Not that you should change in your uh, the way you carry yourself, but you will continue to please the Marys, but you will also become more mature to deliver what the visionary sees you delivering to her. Oh, well, um, thank you. I told the Marys that if this is what the visionary sees in me, then I do want to learn the laws and the customs and the practices and etiquettes and give that which she feels she has a right to claim to. Though well, I've never seen it myself, because I, again, like you said, I'm only human and I can't get back to my world. Uh, Samson told me that it wouldn't be painful to sit on, although I've never heard of such a thing. Why somebody would make a throne of swords, I would imagine that it would stick you somewhere and it would be painful. <laughs> it's not me like that, but yes, when you see it, you will understand. Okay, well thank you, um, Marcelo for the compliments I will love and cherish the Mary to them with all my heart and soul. Yes, I see that you will. And so with that, then they prepare for the next big event. Suddenly, in comes this huge table, which um, has several people carrying it from the sides and the front and back. Oh my god. She quickly looks at William. Do you have a hand in this? Uh, you don't mind. I mean, you do like it, don't you? <laughs> it is nothing that I've ever seen before. Well, it's kind of a kind of a custom of my world. As much as I, when I first came here, I introduced you to something called pigs in a blanket. This doesn't have any animal names either, does it? No, no. <laughs> this is. <clears throat> a royal supreme wedding king, but I wanted to make it special. I had somebody who was an artist using certain foods to make frostings and what have you, make the emblem of my character, my person, who comes from the dark blue star and the night, bright land of the lion night sky, Dragon's here. Uh, you had woken my sleeping dragon. Over on the other one, is your emblem from your banner, the Mother of Dragons emblem. Oh, wow. She shakes her head and can't believe what she's looking at. And I thought, a couple of cool looking, uh, that is, wonderful lit uh, fountains with candlelight would, uh, well, flame, look good at the centerpiece. And, because you are the Mother of Dragons, I had certain small uh, carved dragons made to represent each of your dragons. And, of course, the largest one is, sits somewhat uh, up against the last two cakes of the uh, in the center of it. And so I was able to make a carving of, though it may not look exactly what it looks like you to me, of a miniature queen and king who got married on their wedding day. Oh, William. This is, uh, oh, well. I do not know what to say about this, William. This is not the custom of the world. I do like this with the dragons and all. Well, it's good. Um, there's a tradition that goes with this. There it is. Yes. Um, so he takes her by the hand, they walk over to this table, he's about to use one of the regular knives that are used for serving food. The Sonic's like, oh, no, um, I'm begging your pardon, Daenerys, but as long as this is going to be done, because this is probably a one-time thing, we should do it right. Don't you agree? Well, I suppose. So she takes it into the palace kitchen and comes back out with the um, Daenerys jeweled dagger. 
Oh yes, I remember this. We were very forward in um, someone telling me that you wanted me to do a test on your hand. Yes, you're not going to do that still, are you? No. But I think a jewel dagger to cut the cake would be appropriate. Thank you, Miss Sonny. You're welcome, Mary. William, I do trust you, so how do you want to do this? Well, um, and I said if the right hand hung in your stead, I believe my hand would go on the knife first, and you would go on top showing your authority. I do like this, William. Quite the symbolism in everything that is done. So, he puts the knife on to the edge of the cake, and she puts her hand on top of his, and together they slice a piece down, and then slice another, until they have two pieces of the cake. Now, the way this works, and, uh, Daenerys, is that um, I take the piece that I made, and put it towards you to take a bite of, as you would do for me. I see. And it is a tradition. A uh, human one, but yes, a tradition. Okay. But also I know you can do with a queen. Not that <clears throat> you would have anything to worry about. I know I have to take the first bite because I had it made. So William does, to prove to her no treacheries. That is okay, William. I already trust you. If you're going to do something, you already done it a long time ago. Oh, well, I thought I was expected to do that. No, it's okay. So they do. They uh, then feed each other cake. <laughs> and this is quite an interesting spectacle. And uh, she seems embarrassed because there's frosting on her lips. Well, don't feel too embarrassed, Marys. The best part about this is. We can kiss and eat the frosting of our lips. <laughs> well, in that case, I think I can like this tradition. And so they do. She leans forward, and though it seems a bit odd to her, but she does seem to enjoy this and finds it very stimulating. They kiss each other for the longest time and get the frosting off each other's lips. She shakes her head. This is the strange custom, but does find this very pleasing. Then we have our very own wine glasses, and um, there's another part to this as well. There is, yes, um, in my world, what you do is um, I hold my wine glass and you hold yours, but we wrap our arms around each other. And then we drink from our own glasses. I see. Well, very well then. I wish to try this. And so they do. He helps her with it. You know, this is our first time experience. And they do quite well. Though she'd be a bit taller than him. Um, take a drink of champagne. Or in this case, white wine in her world. And um, so it becomes quite a tradition. And so in the end, they get ready to then close the reception. And the reception then starts to wind down. Um, William tells her many things. The things he looks forward to. And the things that he does want to keep his promise and deliver to her as a visionary had seen with him. And this brings her much to the light. She, as she had told in the secret meeting, though William doesn't know about this, sees many great things in William, and that after much training in proper etiquettes and customs that he will learn of her world, he will deliver it what the visionary had promised. William, I look forward to after the reception of the time we're going to spend together. I did promise you that you're going to have such experiences you've never. Head before. Well, I do look forward to this, and uh, not that I intend to embarrass you or anything, but I do look forward to throbbing in you much and giving you much love 
that will explode from with me in the main empty. <laughs> My own. That is a bit awkward. But I guess you are seeming to do well. Eventually, I think you will come out of your modesty. Not all at once, but eventually you will. And so they kiss for the very longest time. You shouldn't expect to go and um, rest right away, though. Oh, and it's good. I look forward to unwrapping you as my gift. Because as I said, it is okay if I can give it my gifts of you. You are the gift I look forward to unwrapping. <laughs> and with this smile, and she kisses you for the longest time. I do look forward to this as well. Liam, you please me much. And I love the way you let me dominate you and pin you down. And obey any command I give. In and out of the chamber. So <clears throat> eventually they get to where, as she assigns Masandi and uh, her trusted advisor to help gather the guests to be delivered back to the palace, they then are leaving the reception hall, which is actually a war room and get into a carriage that is given to them as a gift since King's Landing always did this for their royalty. And then, waving to everybody in the crown, she and William then ride off back to the palace, and once back there, she then, uh, with William, gets into her chambers, and the smaller chamber, that she chooses the solitude and starts to get undressed so that nothing happens to the dress. William, too, gets into some different clothes so that what he has to do doesn't spoil or ruin the clothing that Tyrion had a tailor make for him. And so as she lays back on this couch like uh, seat, seems very well pleased of everything that has happened. And then she tells William about the long bag. William, if you look back here, you will find this bag that washed on shore. So he does, and he pulls it out, and she watches intently to see what he says or does with it. This is the bag that has the launch board. And as promised, I shall show you the contents of it. Very well then, I look forward to seeing this way out. And so with that, the reception is officially over, and now he must do his last custom, what he calls saying his farewells, because he knows and has accepted his fate that he shall spend the rest of his days in the very stormborn of the House of Targaryen's world. 